This video was made with support from my patrons, whose names are on screen now. If you want to, you can join them today and even get access to exclusive content. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so check it out if you're interested. Anyway, on with the show. So, you know Gran Turismo, right? <laughs> If you've clicked on this video, then I would hope that's the case. But regardless, Gran Turismo is Sony's long-running premier racing game franchise. In fact, it is the longest-running first-party PlayStation series ever. But recently, I had a thought. Just exactly how many Gran Turismo games are there? Now, on the face of it, that might seem like a very easy question to answer. Just look at every game with its title starting with Gran Turismo and add them up. In theory, it's simple. But in practice, it's anything but. If you try to search for the answer yourself, there seems to be very little consensus as to what actually counts as a proper Gran Turismo game. Now, everybody's view on this will be different, so although there won't be any definitive answer to this question, there is still a lot that we can learn about this franchise. What we'll do in this video is work down in tiers of games. The lower the tier, the less acceptable it generally becomes to consider those games as part of the main Gran Turismo franchise. We'll do this until we've covered every single Gran Turismo game in existence. No matter how obscure, forgotten, and even lost some of them may be. But first, we'll start in the top tier. And as you probably expect, the top tier is... So, it's not exactly controversial to think that the Gran Turismo games that have a number in their title count as the main series of Gran Turismo games. We start with the original Gran Turismo, which debuted in 1997. Funnily enough, like with every piece of media that eventually receives a sequel, this game only started to be known as Gran Turismo 1 once Gran Turismo 2 had been announced, thus establishing Gran Turismo as a franchise and not just one singular game. By that literal definition, this means that the original Gran Turismo is not actually a numbered Gran Turismo game. And so to some people who use the presence of a number in the title as what defines a true Gran Turismo game, this is not one of them. But that's all just semantics. Obviously, the original Gran Turismo is a Gran Turismo game. There's no debate around that. Following that, there was Gran Turismo 2, released in 1999, also on the original PlayStation. Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec in 2001 on the PlayStation 2. Gran Turismo 4 in 2004, again on the PS2. Gran Turismo 5 and 6, both on the PlayStation 3 in 2010 and 2013 respectively. And finally, Gran Turismo 7 on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 in 2022. So, beyond just having a number in their title, what do each of these games have in common? Well, for me, the obvious point is the single-player career mode. Each of these games are built around a main campaign, where you compete in various events at different circuits to unlock new cars and earn money, which you can spend on purchasing cars, upgrading your existing cars, etc. Now, we can argue about the merits of how well each of these games does that experience, but the point I'm trying to make for the sake of this video is that they all do it, to varying degrees. Every game we talk about from now on will be lacking in this area in one way or the other. Gran Turismo Sport debuted on the PS4 back in 2017. And at the time, it was seen by a number of people as not a proper Gran Turismo title. Of course, it has no number, merely the Sport tagline. And this reflects the fact that at launch, it barely had any single-player career to speak of. The game was instead built around online racing, and the titular sport mode where that racing takes place. They would add a sort of pseudo-campaign just a few months after the game launched, known as GT League. 
But as this was an additional part of the game that could be ignored entirely, its purpose was merely as an event list. The mode lacked many of the features of the careers from the numbered games, like licenses, prize cars, and multiple race championships. The car upgrade system was also extremely basic when compared to the other games, and there was no form of maintenance like a car wash or oil change. So whilst it's clear that it didn't offer a full Gran Turismo experience, with many features missing, I think most people accept that Sport is still part of the main series. From March 2018 to March 2022, GT Sport was the only officially supported GT game. There is no way that such a thing would be possible if it were just a spin-off title, and as we can now see with GT7, the live service drip-fed content approach is not specific to sport. GT Sport represents a lot of what the Gran Turismo franchise now is, and what it will continue to be. No matter how much I personally disagree with the direction the franchise is going in, I can't deny that GT Sport, and to a similar degree GT7, are Gran Turismo games. So that's our first tier, with the 8 games that are generally accepted to all be Gran Turismo games. So, prior to the release of both GT4 and GT5, shortened preview versions of each game were sold under the Prologue subtitle. Let's start with GT4 Prologue. The full Gran Turismo 4 was slated to release in time for the Christmas period in 2003, but it was unfortunately delayed to 2004 in Japan and early 2005 everywhere else. So, in its place, GT4 Prologue was released in Asia and later Europe. The purpose of GT4 Prologue was twofold. First, to act as a stopgap for players waiting for the full GT4, and second, to prepare newer players who may be less experienced with racing games. As a result of this second point, GT4 Prologue's main campaign was known as School Mode and featured a mixture of events that were similar to the ones that you would find under the licenses and driving missions in the full game. GT5 Prologue, on the other hand, was again designed to fill the void that was left by Gran Turismo 5's lengthy development, and offer a preview of the final game. It launched in Japan in late 2007, and over time it would be updated, culminating in the final Spec 3 version of the game. It initially released with just 37 cars, but would eventually reach a total of 76 models, including a few tuned variants of existing cars. The gameplay of GT5 Prologue was broadly in line with the main GT titles. It featured four classes of events, ranging from full-on races, to time trials, to missions. It also had a selection of one-make races for certain manufacturers. In this respect, GT5 Prologue was a lot closer to a traditional Gran Turismo game than GT4 Prologue, although, given GT5's prolonged development, the final game ended up being quite a lot different from what was previewed here. Because of this, it's not uncommon for people to view GT5 Prologue as its own game, separate from the full GT5. I think the timing also contributed to this. From the point that GT5 Prologue first came out in Japan, to the release of the full GT5, it was almost three whole years. For three years, this was the only officially supported console GT game. So, in a similar way to GT Sport, some might consider it wrong to not recognise GT5 Prologue as a proper Gran Turismo game, given that it carried the torch for the series for so long. Interestingly, on Wikipedia, GT5 Prologue is recognised as its own game separately from GT5, whereas GT4 Prologue isn't, and instead you'll find it under the main article for GT4. It's possible that this is due to GT4 Prologue never being released in North America. It's also worth mentioning that GT4 Prologue reused a lot of assets from Gran Turismo 3 whereas GT5 Prologue carried over very little from GT4. But if we add both of these Prologue titles to our list, we're now up to a total of 10 games, 
and I can assure you that we still have plenty more to go. Tier 3 is a more ragtag group of games than the previous two, which I'm calling the spin-offs. We start with Gran Turismo Concept. There are three versions of GT Concept. First is 2001 Tokyo, which released on January 1st, 2002, featuring concept models which were shown at the 2001 Tokyo Motor Show. Then there was 2002 Tokyo Seoul. It was released in South Korea and had all of the content of 2001 Tokyo, plus additional models that were seen at the 2002 Seoul Motor Show. And finally, there was 2002 Tokyo Geneva. This version was released in Europe, and briefly in Southeast Asia, and as you can probably guess, had all of the content of the previous two versions, as well as even more concept cars that were debuted at the 2002 Geneva Motor Show. As it has the most content, it is often seen as the definitive version of GT Concept. As the name implies, this game focused on concept cars which were seen at various motor shows around that time. It was built on the GT3 game engine and carried across some of the cars and tracks seen in that game. But there are two circuits present which didn't feature in GT3. The returning Autumn Ring and the infamous Pod Race. The gameplay can be broken down into two main modes. The first is Course License, which is exactly what you think it is, and the second being Single Race. So yeah, it's a neat idea for a game, but the actual gameplay is nothing really to write home about. Next up is Taurus Trophy. Much like GT Concept, Taurus Trophy was built on top of the previous game, GT4 in this case. Taurus Trophy is the only game on this list to not have Gran Turismo in its title, and that signifies one key difference. There are no cars, only bikes. All of the bikes in the game were of course designed from scratch, whereas the circuits were just ones ported over from GT4. With one exception. The circuit Ricardo Tormo, aka Valencia, made its debut in this game. Although there were some differences, such as things removed, like off-road racing and B-Spec, as well as new features, like riding gear for example, Taurus Trophy is unmistakably still a Gran Turismo game. The whole career structure, with the exception of a few tweaks here and there, is almost one-to-one -one with a traditional Gran Turismo. You could replace all of the bikes with cars, and it wouldn't be a massively different experience. Alright, next up is Gran Turismo HD Concept. So, despite the similar name, this game has nothing to do with Gran Turismo Concept. Gran Turismo HD was intended to be Gran Turismo's debut on the PS3. There were actually supposed to be two versions, GT HD Premium and GT HD Classic. Premium was intended to be an all-new Gran Turismo game with regular downloadable content, whereas Classic would be like a remastered version of GT4. But prior to the release of either version, a short demo was made titled GT HD Concept. It featured one circuit, a new track based in the Kleiner Scheidegg known as Eiger Nordwand and a handful of cars, most notably the Ferrari 599, which brought the prancing horse to the series for the first time. The game only featured two modes, Time Trial and Drift Trial, with the game also supporting an online ranking system for both. The game was originally only downloadable from the PlayStation Store, but a physical copy was briefly released in Japan, known as Install Disk. Ultimately, GT HD Concept was replaced by GT5 Prologue at the end of 2007, and neither version of GT HD saw the light of day, with GT5 being prioritised instead. And now we have to talk about Gran Turismo on the PlayStation Portable. GT PSP was announced all the way back in May 2004 when the PSP itself was first unveiled, but it would take another 5 plus years to finally release. The original idea was to port GT4 over to the PSP 
and its original name, Gran Turismo 4 Mobile, reflected this. In the end, the game was simply titled Gran Turismo, the same as the original game on the PS1 from 1997. Internally though, the game is actually listed as Gran Turismo 5 Mobile. The decision to remove Mobile from the final name, as well as other scrap names like Gran Turismo Portable and Gran Turismo Spider, was due to it not representing a fully specced Gran Turismo, in the words of series producer Kazunori Yamauchi. But here's the thing, it wasn't a fully specced Gran Turismo. The amount of content fit into the game was deeply impressive. 45 circuit locations and well over 800 cars. But it all seemed to be wasted by Polyphony's decision to not implement a career mode. The game takes place over a series of single races at each track, with a rotating selection of four car dealerships. Although there was a pretty solid driving challenge mode, made up of the usual license and mission style events, it was still somewhat underwhelming, and a complaint that just about everyone on the planet made about this game. So that's tier 3, and with that we have covered all of the officially recognised Gran Turismo games. These are the 14 games that you will find listed on the Gran Turismo website. But I assure you that we are far from finished. So, one thing that's becoming more and more apparent as time goes on is how Gran Turismo is used as a tool for brand awareness. When we look at things like the Sony Honda Afila, the collaboration with Dior, or really the Vision GT program as a whole, it becomes very apparent that these things are not being done primarily for the benefit of the players, but rather the companies involved. And to a degree, this type of marketing has always been a part of Gran Turismo, but in the past it took on a slightly different form. Over time, Gran Turismo has collaborated with many different OEMs, but starting with GT Concept, they would actually create special versions of their games to highlight particular cars and brands. Before GT Concept released, there were apparently demo versions available at the 2001 Tokyo Motor Show, previewing four different concept cars. The Nissan GTR Concept, Honda Dual Notes, Suzuki GSX-R4, and of course, the Toyota Pod. But unfortunately, these demo versions were never released publicly, and there doesn't appear to be any surviving footage or screenshots from them. In fact, the only reason why we know for certain that they existed is because of this list of notable Gran Turismo collaborations that was put together by Polyphony. We have now arrived at Lost Gran Turismo Media, and there's more where that's coming from. Continuing further down that list, we can find the first of the special edition versions of GT Concept that were released after the full game itself. And where better a place to start than with the Daihatsu Kopen? Gran Turismo Concept Copen Special Edition was distributed around June-July 2002, given out at various Daihatsu dealerships in Japan. It features one car, the Daihatsu Copen, and one circuit, Autumn Ring. This game really sets the tone for all of the future GT Concept Special Editions, as they all tend to follow pretty much the same format. Despite the extreme rarity of physical copies of this game, it has been archived and is fully playable. Credit here to Peiki, aka GT Archive, for documenting this and so many of the other games that we'll be looking at shortly. The footage you're currently seeing was recorded by Peiki as well. Following the Copen Special Edition, we have the Airtrek Turbo Special Edition, which was once again given away at Mitsubishi dealerships in Japan. Not too much to say here, just swap out the Copen for the Mitsubishi Airtrek. The only notable thing is that as well as Autumn Ring, the game also includes Swiss Alps as a playable circuit, thusly demonstrating the Airtrek Turbo's off-road capabilities. Once again, it has been archived and is fully playable. As I mentioned earlier, GT Concept was never released in North America, but there is one slight exception. 
When the Nissan 350Z launched in North America, there were press kits given out that included the GT Concept Nissan 350Z Edition. Again, this followed the same formula as the previous special editions, except for the sole playable circuit instead being Cote d'Azur from GT3. Something that's really neat about this demo is that like each of the other special versions, the rest of GT Concept's content is still stored in the game files. This means that technically a North American version of GT Concept could actually be reversed engineered from it by just restoring the hidden contents. There was also a lesser known PAL version of this game and both versions have since been archived. Sticking with Nissan, we then have the Gran Turismo Nissan Micra Edition. Despite the absence of concept from the title, this still is a version of GT Concept, but now for the European debut of the K12 Nissan Micra. Once again, Nissan Micra only car, Autumn Ring only track, you know the drill by now. The car itself isn't too far away from the MM Concept car which featured in the standard GT Concept. Interestingly, unlike all of the other cars which featured in the special versions of GT Concept, this is the only one which didn't return in any future games. It's the UK-specific 2002 Micra Ascenta trim level, but was replaced from GT4 Prologue onwards with the 2003 Micra slash March. Also, there were two versions of this game, with the only real difference being the colour options for the car, and both versions are fully playable today. But now, it's about time that we step back into lost Gran Turismo media, and a handful of games which, even if you're the biggest diehard GT fan, there's a very good chance you've never heard of before. If we take a look down our handy list, we can find the Alfa Romeo 147 GTA Special Edition demo. Much in the same vein as the four demo versions which were apparently at the 2001 Tokyo Motor Show, it appears as though Polyphony made a special version of GT Concept to promote the Alfa Romeo 147 GTA which was launched in late 2002. It seems as though the demo was only playable at the 2002 Turin Auto Show, and as you can probably guess, there doesn't seem to be any footage or screenshots of it anywhere on the internet. But this isn't the only issue with documenting its existence. You see, the document clearly states that the demo was intended for the 2002 Turin Auto Show. The only problem is that the 2002 Turin Auto Show never happened. Due to declining attendance for the year 2000 Turin Auto Show, which was seen as the result of a date change, the 2002 edition would eventually be cancelled. The event itself didn't return until 2015 under a revised format. The standard 147 was first unveiled at that 2000 show, and it seems like the high-performance GTA model was intended to be shown off there in 2002. But with its cancellation, it was actually first seen at the 2002 Paris Motor Show instead. So, did this special demo intended for the 2002 Turin Auto Show even exist? Nobody can say for certain. Maybe it was seen at the Paris Motor Show instead, just like the 147 GTA itself. One thing that does add weight to this demo actually existing is the fact that the 147 GTA is an unused car hidden in the files of GT Concept. But as for this demo, right now it seems extremely unlikely that it will ever surface. Now we skip forward to April 2003. Gran Turismo 4 was first seen publicly at E3 in May of that year. As you might expect, the footage that surfaced from this represents the earliest known sightings of many cars and tracks in this series. Of the track scene, there was the all-new Grand Canyon course, the New York Street Circuit, and also the real-world Tsukuba Circuit. But what's interesting about Tsukuba in particular is that it had actually been seen before in an extremely rare version of GT Concept. The Volkswagen Lupo Cup was a one-make race series for the Volkswagen Lupo, which took place in the early 2000s. 
There was a Japanese offshoot of this known as the Volkswagen Lupo GTI Cup Japan. And this offshoot is where the Lupo GTI Cup car, which featured in GT3, comes from. On the 31st of March 2003, it was announced jointly by Volkswagen Group Japan and Polyphony Digital that a special version of Gran Turismo, known as Gran Turismo Lupo Cup Training Version, would be given to participants of the real-life Lupo GTI Cup Japan. And included in this special version was one car the 2003 Lupo GTI Cup car, and one track, Sakuba Circuit. So amazingly, this game, which was only ever played by a handful of people, marks the first time that Sakuba was ever made playable in these games. But it doesn't end there, because there was even a second version of the game which featured Fuji Speedway as well. Once again, this was also the first time that Fuji was ever seen in the series. Fortunately, a couple of years ago, a Japanese YouTube channel actually uploaded some off-screen footage from this second version of the game, which is what you're seeing right now. But aside from this footage and a handful of screenshots, nothing else from the game has resurfaced. The game has not been archived online, but given that it was actually distributed to participants of the real Lupo GTI Cup in Japan, there are hopes that it could one day reappear. The final known special version of GT Concept is a little bit different. This is the Gran Turismo Subaru Driving Simulator. Not only is this a special piece of software, but it also came with its own unique piece of hardware. As reported in this Japanese blog, it took the form of a full motion simulator with a triple monitor setup. This unit in particular was seen at a Subaru dealership in Fujisawa, Kanagawa Prefecture in Japan. But there were apparently two more which were located in Odawara and Sagamihara, both also in Kanagawa Prefecture. This version of the game features two circuits, Midfield Raceway and Swiss Alps, and a whopping three different models, the Subaru Impreza World Rally Car, Subaru Legacy, and Legacy B4. The whole setup was actually powered by three PS2 consoles, seen here all in a special edition Sakura Color. Once again, the game has not resurfaced online, and so is also considered as lost. But this is not the only instance of these Subaru motion simulators being used. Once Gran Turismo 4 had been announced at E3 2003, a very similar style of rig was seen running a very early version of the game. This game is understood to be GT4 Prologue's Subaru version. As far as anyone knows, this version was only used at various shows where GT4 was being previewed. But, in 2007, a video was uploaded to YouTube showing the motion simulator, with what looks like the GT4 Prologue Subaru version, just being played in someone's front yard. How or why this video exists is still a mystery to this day. But now we have crossed over into Gran Turismo 4 Prologue. The first known version of GT4 Prologue that was distributed publicly is the GT4 Prius Trial version. This version contains a single track, Sakuba Circuit, and a single playable car, the 2003 Toyota Prius, although the previous generation Prius is also included as an opponent car. One of the unique things about this version is the heads-up display, which shows the battery status of the car's hybrid system, including both usage and regen. This HUD would actually carry over for both Prius models in the final GT4. Following this game, there were also two versions of the GT4 2004 Special Edition Toyota demo, which were given out at the 2004 New York Auto Show and Geneva Motor Show respectively. Just like GT Concept, this means that although the full GT4 Prologue was never released in North America, they did at least get this short demo. The demo included both Fuji Speedway and Grand Canyon, and alongside the Prius, you could also drive the Toyota Motor Triathlon race car. Something quite interesting about this demo is that its version of Grand Canyon features a tarmac section at the start, 
It's been speculated that this is because it was an early version of the circuit. However, when the track was first seen in footage at E3 the previous year, it never had a tarmac section. It's possible that the tarmac part was added purely for this demo, but there's no way to prove that. Fortunately, all of these Toyota-based special versions of GT4 Prologue have been preserved and are fully playable. Before the full Gran Turismo 4 released, there was actually a special demo created based on it, and not GT4 Prologue. The demo in question is this, the GT4 BMW 1 Series Virtual Drive. It contained three circuits, the Nürburgring Nordschleife, New York, and Costa di Amalfi, as well as two versions of the then new BMW 1 series, the Diesel 120D and Petrol 120i. There isn't too much information on this game, but it was only released in Europe and is based on the first preview build of GT4. There was a second version known as the Virtual Drive Dealership, which hints at the purpose of the game and most likely where it could have been obtained. The only difference in this version is the presence of a time limit, and both versions are fully playable today. And even after the full GT4 released, there were still more special versions. Here's the GT4 Mazda MX-5 Edition. This game was given away as a prize at certain Mazda Zoom Zoom Live events in 2005. It features three circuits, Laguna Seca, Sakuba, and Cote d'Azur, as well as the then new third generation 2005 Mazda MX-5. Much like the Micra before, this game would be the only appearance of this particular model, as it was replaced by the 2007 model of the car from GT5 onwards. Something unique about this car is the driver model, which is the same one that is used in many of the vintage cars in GT4, like the Ford Model T and Ben's Patent Motorwagen. Due to how it was given out, copies of the game are extremely rare, and for a while its existence was unknown to the wider world. Despite this, a copy of the game was actually sold on eBay back in 2019, for a grand total of $472. Fortunately, you don't have to pay anything like that to actually play the game, since it has been archived online. And speaking of online, the final versions of GT4 that we need to take a look at were both created with online play as the priority. Firstly, there was the GT4 online test version, which was created in 2006 for the purpose of testing online functionality to prepare for future Gran Turismo titles. There was a public beta which distributed copies of this version to members of GranTurismo.com, 4,700 being from Japan and a further 300 from South Korea. There were also a handful of events in which real-life Super GT drivers and WRC champion Sebastian Loeb were invited to play and compete on this online test version. The second online version was known as the GT4 Online Public Beta, and was available to members of the PlayStation Gamer Advisory Panel. It served the same purpose as the online test version, but now for North America. These online versions have since been resurrected, and many more people have been able to enjoy playing GT4 Online than was ever intended. And with that, we have covered all of the special versions of GT Concept, GT4 Prologue, and GT4. For the sake of completeness, we do still have a few more special versions to cover, however. The first is the Gran Turismo 5 Prologue Special Event version GT by Citroen from 2008. Basically, it's just a demo version of GT5 Prologue with the GT by Citroen as the only playable car. All six circuit locations from the standard GT5 Prologue are available, and it's also notable for having the rest of the full GT5 Prologue still within it. Next up is the GT5 Time Trial Challenge. This was a demo which was downloadable on the PlayStation Network starting in December 2009. It featured the Nissan 370Z in both stock and tuned variations, and one circuit, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
This demo represented the first time that Indianapolis was made playable in these games, and for players in the US and Canada, the whole thing took the form of an online competition. The player with the best combined lap time in each country, driving both the stock and tuned 370Z, would win a trip to the Indianapolis 500 in 2010. Next is GT Academy 2012. This was a special version of GT5 released in May 2012, used for hosting the in-game GT Academy competition. It contained eight Nissan models with GT Academy branding, which were used in events, as well as the five 2008 Super GT Nissan GTRs, which appeared in the full GT5 but went unused here. There was also a GT Academy version of the Skyline 370 GT, which went fully unused also. This version has a whopping 20 tracks included, as well as four of the GT5 course maker themes also. And finally, there was also GT Academy 2013. This version took place on an early build of Gran Turismo 6, being available almost half a year before the full game itself. Once again, it took the form of a limited time free demo, and there were five playable Nissan models. The demo contained seven circuit variations taking place across four locations. Suzuka, Grand Valley, Autumn Ring, and finally Silverstone, making its series debut. One thing that's notable about this demo is that it has a couple of single player events, the Sunday Cup and the Clubman Cup. Each of them have two races, with the Nissan Leaf being used in the Sunday Cup, and the 370Z in the Clubman Cup. All of the versions I've mentioned here have been archived and are fully playable as well. And with that, we've covered pretty much everything. As for if these count as unique games, that's really up to your own point of view. If you ask me, I only consider the versions that were actually distributed as games, so the versions that were only ever playable demos at shows don't count for me. I'll admit that this can be fairly arbitrary, but the line has to be drawn somewhere. I also didn't include early preview versions of these games, like Gran Turismo Test Drive Disc for example. This is because I don't consider an earlier build of an existing game as a game in its own right, only if it's been made for some specific purpose, like showing off unique cars. And also, most of the time, they just aren't that interesting to talk about either. If we count all of the unique special versions that were actually distributed to the public, we reach a total of 16 more Gran Turismo games. In addition to the 14 we already have, that makes 30 overall. But if you want to also include versions that were never distributed, and in some cases only rumoured to even exist, we can add 7 more, thus making a grand total of 37 Gran Turismo games. But that figure is far from concrete. When you look at it like this, it's not at all surprising that most outlets only count the big games when doing things like trying to rank every Gran Turismo game, for example. To be honest, even if a few of these are kinda cool in terms of their historical significance or rarity, there often really isn't much more to them than that. Did you think we were done here? If you're in the know when it comes to GT games, there is almost certainly one game that you're shocked I haven't mentioned yet. So, here it is. GT 2000. So, what is GT 2000? Well, whenever people talk about GT 2000 as a game that can be played, what they really mean is the GT 2000 demo. GT 2000 was first shown off as a successor to GT 2, all the way back in September 1999. It was unveiled alongside the PlayStation 2 console that it would be played on, and in those early days, it really just looked like a slightly enhanced version of GT2. But then, at the PlayStation Festival 2000 that was held in February in Japan, an updated version of the game was shown off. This version of the game, featuring the Lancer Evo 5 as the only playable car, and Seattle Circuit as the only playable track, is what most people would come to know GT2000 as. 
This is because the demo of the game was given out in limited numbers to people who attended the event where it was playable. Cue the game eventually being dumped online, and many more people being able to play it whenever they wanted to. This demo of the game is where the whole Yellow Evo and Daiki Kasho Mirage meme come from, and that might seem trivial, but something like that really does have the power to define what a game is in people's minds. The game was seen again at E3 in May, where Laguna Seca was included, and then also at the Tokyo Game Show where an updated version of Deep Forest was shown off as well. Despite Special Stage Route 5 being seen in the trailer first announcing the game, it was never actually playable in any build of GT2000. The game was planned to release in December 2000, but ended up missing that deadline by a good few months. As a result of the delay, the name GT2000 didn't really make sense for a game now releasing in 2001. So it was ultimately renamed to the far more conventional Gran Turismo 3 instead. And that's the story of how Gran Turismo 2000 became Gran Turismo 3. But this is already fairly common knowledge, so what's my point here? Well, I believe that when it comes to looking at every single Gran Turismo game, GT2000 stands alone in quite a unique position. I did just say that I don't consider an earlier build of an existing game to be a game in its own right, but somehow GT2000 seems different. I think that what this game represented for this franchise was something far bigger than what we give it credit for. Because yes, it was just an early version of GT3, but had the game actually released as GT2000, I have no doubt that it would have had massive ramifications for the series as a whole. GT3 changed so much during its development, starting out as just an updated version of GT2, and eventually morphing into something completely new and fresh. GT2000 took a slice of that development and showed us what the game could have been like instead. In essence, it is Gran Turismo 2.5. And when you consider the legacy of GT2000, its backstory, and the unlikely memes, it all adds up to something that is truly unique in the Gran Turismo series. And I think it's something that we should appreciate more often. So that's all to say that I do personally consider the GT2000 playable demo as its own unique game. And that brings us up to a grand total of 31 Gran Turismo games. Or 38, or however many you personally think there are. Because as you might have guessed by now, the point of this video was never really to determine the exact number of GT games but rather to shine a spotlight on, and talk about, some of these lesser known versions. The story of Gran Turismo will always be defined by the big games, the ones that everybody recognises, but these lesser known demos and special versions are, to me, just as worth talking about. I really hope that even if you're the biggest Gran Turismo fan who knows practically everything about this franchise and its games, that you've still managed to learn something new from this video. I know that I certainly have from making it. And really, the fact that there are people who are so dedicated to the cause of archiving and recording every single piece of information about these games is really special, and something that we shouldn't take for granted. Because it's things like these that demonstrate just how special Gran Turismo is to so many people. As always, have a good one.